The Dodge Charger Daytona and the Plymouth Superbird are quite famous thanks to Chrysler's wild looking aero solutions and they clearly worked, otherwise the Superbird wouldn't have won the championship in 1970. But I don't think a lot of people understand what the advantage to the wing really was, so in this video I'm hoping to clear it up. I'd like to say first that I'm not an expert in aerodynamics, I just find it interesting, I have a decent surface level understanding of it. I'm sure I'll get out correct in the comments when I forget to fact check something, but anyway let's begin. Originally this video was going to be me giving a bit of an analysis based on my own knowledge of aerodynamics. Then I found this amazing site called aerowarriors.com, which is a site focused on the Chrysler Aero cars. Unfortunately it hasn't been updated since 2009, but the site still has some great info despite looking outdated. On it is featured a great article on wind tunnel testing for the cancelled 1971 cars, going over every single configuration they went through, and they did some crazy stuff and just seeing exactly how it changed the car, uh, there's a link to that in the description. Finding this made me rethink everything I was going to say. First the plan was to talk about how I thought they had no idea what they were doing, just did some basic streamlining and then they wanted some downforce but there's wide wing on that need to be tooled to let the boot fit through. But then the more I looked into it, the more I realised this wing was pretty great for what they wanted to do at the time and combined with the wind tunnel research made me think this was actually quite an advanced car for the time. There's actually across the car quite a lot of interesting aerodynamics, but we're just going to focus on the wing for this video. So the first thing I was going to cover is that a wing isn't a good idea for a stock car for multiple reasons. I've got this footage of Brad Keselowski being spun and then flipping from 2010. Thankfully he was unharmed, but this is one of the reasons wings aren't good for stock cars. It's common for cars to spin and wings work in both directions, so if you start going backwards, suddenly the thing pushing your car onto the road is lifting it up and it flips. Safety side, a wing is a trade-off. You add downforce and also drag, whereas a spoiler reduces drag and also reduces lift. Okay, you're not getting the same kind of traction benefit, but on high speed oval, if you're on a wing, you're going to have to make some sacrifice to stability in order to get more speed. Uh, the position of a wing is important. Spoilers tend to be low and exist to stop air coming off the roof and boot lid, continuing down the rear of the car and getting trapped behind the car. Uh, this helps reduce drag and also reduce lift. The wing on the Daytona is very high, completely out of any sort of airflow coming off the windscreen and onto the roof. It's good for efficient downforce, it means all the air coming at it is clean, as in it hasn't been mixed with any of the air trying to find its way around the windscreen and roof. But at the same time it means that it definitely isn't functioning like a spoiler and reducing drag in any way. So was this why the wing was so tall? I think it's part of the reason why. That theory about the boot needing to open does seem like another reason, especially from watching the clearance in Forza Vista, but I think there's a third reason. What does a Porsche LMP1 car, an Impreza Rally car, and a Daytona all have in common? Stabilizers, or fins, essentially. On the Porsche, it's an actual shark fin. On the Impreza, it comes in the form of these slats in the rear wing. On the Daytona, it's the side of the nice. wing. If this is the Daytona going through the air, uh, the white lines are my attempt to try and visualise the air. Uh, here's it, that you can see some of the air hitting the front. Uh, this could be in cornering, in straight line, whatever. It's just the car's moving in a direction and the air's coming at it. Now here's the car sliding. You can see that the, the air is hitting the side, obviously, and you can see the top line there hitting the wing. You've kind of got to imagine that these lines are infinitely tall, and you've got the tall wing there that's also quite long, and the air hitting it is helping to push the car straight again. Uh, this is known as side force, rally cars use it, drift cars also use it, and those uh, shark fins on uh, the LMP1 cars uh, use a similar idea. Richard Petty supposedly said that these cars were difficult to spin out, and that's why I haven't actually found a source on that, but it's just something that I've seen repeated so much, I don't know. Maybe there's someone who can provide a source for it in the comments. Uh, but yeah, the big wing struts, the end plates, whatever you want to call it, supports, uh, are what made it a stable car. So the wing was designed to keep the car stable and make efficient downforce. 
I wouldn't be surprised if at first they built it to clear the boot lid and then realised what it helped with, but looking on Aero Warriors, they were testing for side force in the wind tunnel in 1971. They definitely knew what they were doing. So, what about maximum downforce? The wing is adjustable, as shown by this bolt in it, although I doubt they ever ran high angles on it. It's also very short, there's not actually a lot of surface area on the actual wing, the bit that produces downforce. Uh, there's also no end plates over the top. End plates on a wing help trap air going over the top of it so it doesn't just spill out onto the sides, you know, keeps it going in the correct direction. But they also produce drag at the tips of them. So by having the wing connect smoothly in this nice curve, you don't get that harsh edge at the tip that produces vortexes and then drag. I can't find anything on peak downforce figures, and I don't trust the figures Forza is giving, but taking all this into account, I don't think it produces much. Uh, it's more of a stabiliser for the car, which you know makes sense, it's going at high speed, you don't need a lot of downforce. Although interestingly, according to the Aero Warriors post, the supports for the wing apparently produced 150 pounds of lift, so having the wing there was definitely needed to try and cane to that. I will also I'd also just like to take a look at what could have been. Uh, the air cars were taken out of sport for good reasons, on grain of safety and style, but looking at some of the ideas they had, I really wish they weren't, like this bi-wing design, and also just a massive, I think it was 19 inch cord, which is like the length of the wing. Um, it's crazy, this was planned for the 1971 car, and it makes me wonder what sort of insanity we could have seen some dedicated kits for cars and things like that, just trying to push the limits of, you know, low drag but stability. Kind of like Le Mans, but for an entire season, I guess. Um, but with that said, it's probably best that they didn't continue, based on the, the sort of costs you'd need to keep wind tunnel testing at all these cars, trying to find bigger and bigger gains and stuff like that. So, yeah... Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to Boost and Ethanol for more. Leave a like, comment about it. I'm happy to talk about aerodynamics more and more, so if there's like cars you'd like me to talk about, I'm down for that. Or just want certain aerodynamic features explained. Um, bear in mind they might be a bit opinionated, but I'll try and keep them factual. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, goodbye.